Hey guys, so I'm going to show you on Inkscape uh, how to weld letters, how to turn your, your text into an object and then how to weld them, which it seems like is um, kind of a lot of hangups that I guess some people have using this program. Um, I've never really messed around with this program before. I'm more familiar with Illustrator, um, but a lot of the functions are very, very similar. Um, from my two cents and what it's worth, Illustrator is a lot more intuitive um, and it's a lot easier to use. There are some glitches that are in this for sure that I have found even messing around with it within the last hour. However, if you don't want to spend, you know, the, I think it's like 25 or $30 a month to have Illustrator, then this is a great option. Um, but there are a lot of things that would even as a, somebody who's familiar with programs like this, that's frustrating to me as well. So I can only imagine if you're not used to this, that it's also frustrating. So anyway, um, let's get down to this. Uh, the artboard, the way that I have it set up right now is obviously I just have three basic um, circles that are on here for a lot of the ornaments that you guys are making. These are the perimeters, um, the cut lines, and then for the loop or the hook or whatever it is that you're putting on. Uh, you want to make sure, of course, that your objects that you have, that I use the um, little elliptical tool here, uh, it doesn't have a fill on it. So down in the fill, um, let me actually select one of these really quick. So the fill, you can see I have it X'd out, so there's no color on the inside. And then the stroke I have set here, which is the first little swatch, it just means it's a solid color. And then the stroke right here I have set at 0.25 millimeters. And this will be important um, when you start getting into the welding portion of your letters. So I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more once I get there. Anyway, my font that I have is just a basic font that I either have uploaded on my computer or is stuck on this program. I'm pretty sure it's from my computer, but it's Snell Roundhand. It's a nice little script font that's in here um, in bold. And uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to take our, our text, our font, and we want to turn it into an object. So what you would do is you would go to your little selection tool up here in the corner. You would select your text that you have and then you would go to path and then object to path. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn it into still a scalable vector, but something that the program reads as objects instead of a text or a font um, element to your design. So once you have that um, selected and you went to path, object to path, you're going to want to take out your fill and you're going to want to add a stroke. So again, you can just make sure it's selected, go to fill, hit X, so there's nothing. You'll see nothing there, because we don't have a stroke on it. Go to stroke, and then hit solid color, and you'll get this. So this is where your cut path is going to be on your Glowforge. Uh, the one thing that I see a lot of people having problems with are these little tiny overlaps right here. So you can see in like the H going into the R, and the R going into the I. The Glowforge is reading that as a cut path, and even when you're engraving, that's causing the color swapping where it's going back and forth from engraving to not engraving, from engraving, dark to light, and you know, so forth. So to fix that, you want to, um, first I would go to your stroke style over here and put in 0.25 millimeters. It makes it a little bit easier to see everything that you're working with. You can see the lines a little bit clear. But what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to this tool up here, which gives you your anchor points. Those are all the little squares that you see when you select uh, your shapes. And when you go in and you select them, you'll see like it'll highlight. It's gonna give you all of these. So once you have one letter selected or one object selected, and this, like I said, this works with objects as well, not just font or lettering, any object that you create on your artboard. If you hold down shift and select the other letters, you can see it starts to put all of them, kind of you're selecting them all at once. Once you have those all selected, you're gonna wanna go to path and then union. And what this will do is when you click out of it, is now you can see that all those overlapping lines are gone. So the cut path that your Glowforge is reading is now you know, right here, instead of up onto the I and then back, or up onto the N where the tails of the letters are, it's just one continuous design. So the next thing that I would recommend doing when you're working with a really delicate font or something that's like a, like a script font that 
you know, is very dainty here on like the upstrokes and there's a lot of high contrast. I would offset your path slightly so that the kerfing of your laser doesn't burn through uh, your material. If it's too thin, the laser when it's cutting like right here on the H, on the top part and the bottom part, it's basically just gonna burn away any material that you have on there unless you're making a really huge ornament. So to do that, what you would do is you would just select your, your name or your lettering, again, your object, and then you would go to path and then outset. And what that's going to do is you can see this little tiny icon right here. It's saying that it's gonna take your inside line and you're gonna make it a little bit, go a little bit more outside. So it's outsetting or offsetting. So when you do that, what you will get is, let's go back, sorry, our direct selection, path and outset. There we go. It makes the font a little bit bolder, a little bit more, um, a little bit easier for the cut path of the laser to not destroy those really thin parts that are on there. So the next thing that you're going to want to do also is you obviously want to join this lettering to your ornament right here to the ring. So in order to do that, you will select your ring that you have and then you will select your font again. And then you will hit object, I'm sorry, path and then difference. Oh, I keep doing that. It doesn't work on this one like that. So if you see right here, the C is not connected to this lettering uh, when it cuts like that. It, these this will be super super delicate. I do not recommend actually doing this I would probably move the C a little bit closer to the H so that I could unify those but I didn't on this because I'm actually not making this but uh, Let's just go ahead and follow through with connecting it to the ornament. Just keep that in mind when creating your designs so if I select this here and I select this here and then I go to path and difference you can see that it unified my A to this inside ring right here. And if I select the C and I do the same thing again and I go to path difference, it'll merge that as well. So in theory, this would still technically cut perfectly fine on the Glowforge. I personally, for from a design perspective, would change a few things. This is way too delicate right here. It would likely break off very easily and I'm not a huge fan of the little C curls, I would go in and manually adjust those. But this is basically the function of what you wanna do when you're creating um, any of your templates like this or your, your lettering. Also up here, you're gonna to wanna to unify those. So again, you would just click on the loop, you would click on the outer loop, and then path and union and it creates it. So now you can kind of see the ornament taking a little bit more shape. To add the inset here, where you would actually thread or hang the ornament, you would just use your little elliptical tool and draw a little tiny oops, little circle and then select it. And you could nudge it, move it around your artboard with your um, arrow keys. And as long as that's a stroke, a solid stroke and it has no fill, if I was to save this as an SVG, it would cut exactly like this. There would be no engraving, just cutting on it. So anyway, um, I hope that helped uh, explain how to weld letters together and different elements of your designs into um, your, uh, yeah, your Glowforge SVGs.